the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. This video I'm joined by KM6TXE and KM6EWJ to discuss the 2020 field day initiatives that we did here in Ventura County. Uh, they both participated in field day and uh, have a lot of really valid and constructive comments. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and join the interview. Oh, and uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and hit like if you like this video. I am lucky enough to be uh, talking with Lindsay, KM6TXE, and Tyler. Where are you, Tyler? There you are, KM6EWJ, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the 2020 Field Day event that was held here in Ventura County. Um, you know, just to kind of start out a little bit, uh, how long have you guys had your licenses? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I've probably had mine for about five, five years, I would say. Okay. I got my amateur or my technician about five years ago, and then I just got my general a year ago or so. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah. So that leads me into you, Lindsay. When did you first get your license, or should I just tell you? <laughs> yeah, you tell me. You know, I, I got my technician license June two years ago, and okay. then to the date, one year after that, I got my general. It was very coincidental that the testing dates were exactly a year apart. But wow. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> and why did you get your license? So my family has always been very much into ham radio. My grandpa was into ham radio from the time he was 15. He got my dad into it. And then, you know, once <coughs> my sister and I grew up like sorting transistors ba and resistors based on the colors and things like that. So we've kind of always been around the hobby. Um, and then after we graduated college and finally had some free time to study more things for fun, uh, you know, then we looked into getting licenses for ourselves. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. And then for me, um, I got it to uh, make her grandpa and her dad <laughs> happy as a way to kind of uh, get garnish some goodwill with the family. <laughs> That's great, man. That is yeah, really totally. cool. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, um, and you both hold generals, so that's absolutely awesome. Why'd you go for the general? Uh, do you want to get into HF and all that? Yeah, so we'd had fun, you know, using our little handy talkies. We had our little Yesus, and it was fun talking with each other. We'd take them hiking, um, but really we kind of wanted to be able to get a broader reach, um, including being able to reach family um, and just, you know, I've heard all the cool stories of, you know, contacting other countries. And I thought, you know, why not? Right. It sounds yeah. really cool. And just being able to have that ability if needed, I think was something that was worth taking another 35 question, multiple choice test. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, the extra is next. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I found out yeah. she was, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I found out she was studying for the uh, general. And so the week of the test, I decided, why don't I take the test as well? <laughs> there you so go. I studied, uh, you know, maybe two days and took the test. Uh, fortunately, mm -hmm. I have a background in physics. So I had a bit of an advantage and we both passed. Absolutely awesome. You got an antenna going up on your roof too. You've been talking about, right? Yeah, the guys? antenna install is done. Wow, okay. Yep, got an off-center fed um, for the HF frequencies uh, on an inverted V on our roof right now. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Have you used it? Uh, I have listened on it. I haven't really uh, done any transmitting. I'm uh, also a teacher, and I've been kind of trying to prep for the school year. So, oh, yeah. well, Was this you guys' first field day? It was. We, you know, we'd heard about field days and we'd heard lots of stories from 
her uh, from Lindsay's grandfather and her, and her uncle about field day and in context that they'd made and stuff. And it sounded really fun, um, but it also sounded really intimidating. And we were um, not experienced operators, and so it was kind of uh, scary to 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 try and go and participate. Particularly because, you know, Field Day has scripts and it's very structured and there's things you have to pass on. So like we were more comfortable on the, the unstructured nets where you just say your name and you talk about, you know, your day. But the fact that Field Day, you know, has rules uh, on top of the regular operating rules, it's kind of like, oh, like <laughs> you don't want to mess up kind of. <laughs> well, I don't want the rules, but yeah, I hear you. It's like the first time you do a contest or something like that, or you, you, uh, uh, you happen to accidentally stumble onto somebody that's doing a contest, you know, in normal operating. Uh, and, you know, they go, oh, well, you know, what's your exchange? What's your, ex yeah, I, <laughs> I, I hear you. Yeah. Um, but of course, we all know field day is not a contest. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, if, if since it's your first field day, did it meet your expectations of what you thought it was going to be? Um, I would say it was much more hectic than I had ever seen the, the <laughs> waves. And I don't think I was quite ready for just how many people were out there and just really? how many, how big the pileups were. Like I knew that it could happen, but I didn't think it would be constant pileups all day. Oh yeah. 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 We were, you know, we were in our backyard already and then like 11 AM hits. It's just like chaos. And we were just like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think we honestly just sat there for like 15 minutes, just like going like, oh my goodness. And then finally like, okay, I think I can talk now. I think there's a, a break for me. <laughs> well, you certainly caught on fast guys, because I mean, according to the terrygraves.org website, it looks like you guys did 42 QSOs. So <laughs> now, that doesn't sound like a lot, okay? Uh, when you when you look at 24 hours, and especially when you look at you know some of the other numbers of QSOs that were out there uh, for field day. However, you did it on VHF, and that is huge. That is huge. Uh, you know, it's it's real easy to make three or four hundred QSOs on HF when you've got the whole world to talk to. Mm -hmm. you know but vhf you're locked in a little box <laughs> well and in addition to that is we were operating on low power we were yeah. on five watts so a lot of times we could hear people and we would call out and i think we just got overpowered and they never heard us yeah and that'll happen a lot that'll happen a lot um you talked a lot about the initial anxiety and stuff like that um you know uh, do you th do you feel that you were prepared when this all started? Um, kind of. I, I think I watched your video of uh, the practice exchange with N six PK. I think I watched oh. that like <laughs> five or six times, yeah. and with a pen and paper out, just making sure I wrote down everything you said. Yeah, we had a script right on our table where it's like, okay, so if if we start, this is what we say. If they start, this is what we say. So you know, we watched the video, we wrote it down just in case. Uh, wrote out our call signs phonetic or our call, my call sign phonetically because we operated under my call sign just because I know in that the heat of the moment you're like uh, Q, QR QS uh, QSL <laughs> yeah so, right yeah right. We, we we wrote out our script in case we got caught <laughs> right on right on well you know I I had a few cues with you I think I had you on um, uh, two meters I had you on 440 um, and uh, yeah it you did great. I mean, seriously. It was really fun. It was, yeah, you... uh, we, we were expecting it to be fun. And in that aspect, it definitely met our expectations. We had a blast doing it. Yeah, awesome. I think I think it, it was more fun than I thought it would be. Because like, I thought, you know, because it's like, oh, yeah, cool. It'll be fun. We can talk to people. But, you know, we'd be like, I haven't heard them before. Like the, the excitement, like, oh, my God, I got to talk to them. <laughs> And then, because we're in the, the Santa Barbara area, right, and we could hear all of the people from the LAX region, 
but I think because we were on low power, we couldn't reach out to them. And I was just like, no, I'm like, please call back to me. And so the first LAX contact we got was, you know, pretty far down our list, but we were just like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could have been that. someone in Westlake, but like, we were very excited. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so, all right, you felt reasonably prepared. Did uh, did the Zoom meetings? Did the uh, did all that? Did you participate at all in the main Zoom meeting during the uh, during the event? We we didn't. We did some Zooms. There were some preparatory Zoom meetings, sure. so we definitely called into those. And even there, we kind of brought some of our initial questions, even of like, so there's two of us. Like, how can we play with two people? Like, what is our station classified as? So that was definitely helpful. And then we also had some questions on antennas and we did check in. I know for a large portion of the time, Zach was on the Bozo repeater, I think it was, for yes. any questions. We definitely called in there. Like we, we'd made a contact with someone on 70 centimeters that we'd previously contacted on two meters. And we we're like, wait, does that count? We weren't sure. Absolutely. So we, yep, yeah. so we popped over there real quick just to make sure we're like, wait, does this count? And they're like, you're good. <laughs> so having that kind of live help, I think was good to have. So you actually did, uh, did more on the countywide net that was going on during the event for your questions and stuff. You didn't hang out too much in the actual zoom meeting on, uh, during the day. Um, right. yep. that was yeah. the time so that's, yeah, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's well, how we got you know so many what? contacts. <laughs> well, we, we sit here, when we put all this stuff together, we were really struggling over, God, we're going to have all this stuff. Do we need all this? And it, it sounds like, yeah, you know, everything kind of paid off. I interviewed uh, two other people earlier today, and they said, oh, the Zoom meeting was amazing. You know, that yeah. was that was great. And all the stuff leading up to it, the Zoom meetings, the nets, yep. everything else. Um, did you ever have any problems getting any of your questions either before the uh, uh, event or during the event answered? Was everybody no. pretty much? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Whenever we had any sort of question and, and if we could talk it out and figure it out ourselves, we would ask on, and, and we could even sometimes just at a random time during the day, even just hop on the repeater and ask the question and someone would answer it for us. So we got a uh, quick help whenever we asked for it. It was really nice. Yep. Well, I was going to say the week leading up, we were making sure that, you know, our antenna was working and we were testing this, that, and the other thing. And we had some people, uh, you know, just quickly respond. And we were trying to get uh, six meters, I think, working. It was either six or 10. We wanted to try to get one of those two bands working. And a couple of days before field day, we realized that we weren't quite set up to do that but it was because we had some help from you guys that we learned that ahead of time and weren't struggling during field day. Like, why isn't anyone contacting me? So we knew going into it that we were going to be on VHF only. <laughs> so this is going to be kind of a weird question, and but I'm going to go ahead and try to phrase it in a way that, that makes sense. With the COVID stuff and everything else that's going on, do you think that that had an impact on whether or not you did participate? I mean, if all these things in our lives weren't changing, yeah. would you have possibly participated in field day? It, it's an interesting question because I know last year we were wanting to do field day, but we're gone on vacation. So from that aspect, right, if we were on vacation again this year, we may have missed field day again. But I don't think that because of COVID, we did field day. But I think it definitely made sure that we were home that weekend. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. And I think it's, you know, field day is something that we heard lots of stories about and it sounded fun. And we, we had been wanting to do it. You know, we, we tried and thought about doing it in the past and never yeah. and never had. And so if, if not this year, we probably would have gotten around to it next year or mm -hmm. or very soon because we, we did want to participate. And I think fortunately this year, uh, you know, just the way things have been made it like, well, you don't have a choice. You have to participate. <laughs> 
Well, you know, this year is, it was very unusual from the standpoint of how we all participate in field day normally. Uh, I happen to be one of the uh, organizers for the event at the Reagan Library. So we go out there, set up giant towers in the Reagan parking lot. We've got, you know, all these different stations scattered throughout the Reagan property. We have uh, a giant PIO tent. The thing about the Reagan is if you want to uh, uh, preach about amateur radio, you'll see and talk to 3,000 people. Okay. You know? And uh, I hope that we have some sort of a drive for people after they've done their time, as it were, at the public location and go home to operate on their own as well. You know, do you think that would be something that might fit the model for next year? I think so, because I was initially a little disappointed that we weren't going to be able to have like field day, right, as it typically happens, like hearing all the, the stations and getting to see all the fancy HF rigs, especially because that's not something we've had a lot of experience in, right? Because for me, field day has always been like HF, the big long distance contacts. So I was like, oh, like people aren't going to be on, you know, our bands, we're going to maybe talk to a couple people, we don't get to see all the equipment. So I was initially a little bummed, but it was super fun. So I think knowing how fun it is at home, you know, next day when field day is in person, I would definitely, you know, during the day, go see, you know, play with all the fancy toys, talk to the people, but then go home, right, and then have your own mini competition. Mm -hmm. And I think if more people are also kind of following that model, right? I think that um, would encourage maybe more participation at home, right? Because this kind of let you know, like, yep, you can have fun at field day at home. Like, you don't have to have the fancy setup. Um, mm -hmm. If you had have had your HF rig set up, would you have uh, played around at all on uh, some of the longer bands? I mean, you're, you're set up now. We are, yeah. I, we definitely would have. Um, it's kind of you know, one of our big goals is to reach um, our family who lives a little further south down in LA County, uh, trying to reach them simplex. You know, we can talk on repeaters and whatnot, but, uh, you know, part of the purpose of amateur radio is, you know, disaster preparedness, right? So exactly. if it comes to the point where we need to contact our families, um, we need to be able to reach them simplex. And the only way to do that is HF. So we definitely do want to practice and try and hit them. Um, we haven't done it yet, um, but we definitely would have made a, a pretty strong effort on field day uh, to give it a shot. Yeah. Right on, right on. And of course, there's always emergency communications. Ventura County is really active in that as well. So, um, all right. Well, you know, gosh, you guys covered all my questions. Anything that I didn't bring up or that you guys would like to mention before we uh, take this thing to its uh, rightful end? Um, I, I guess one thing that I will say um, is I, I really do look forward to a field day that's kind of more in, in person. Uh, like Lindsay was saying, you know, you get to go see all the everybody's cool radios and setups. But really, you know, we're, we're fairly new to the hobby. We've had our, radio, or our licenses only a couple of years. And, you know, we, we watch YouTube videos and we read articles and, and books. But I kind of feel like there's nothing like hearing from an experienced ham uh, and getting some coaching and, and having them there with you at the radio turning the knobs is, mm -hmm. is an experience that I really want. And I think having that in person at a future field day is is going to be something that's really valuable. You know, and just to mention, there are a lot of events that go on year round, typically where we'll meet at parks and things like that, which, uh, you know, would probably be a, a big kick in the you know what for you guys to be able to participate in as well. Um, you know, bring your radios out and the rest of the stuff that goes with that. And, you know, of course, we're trying to promote all the contests that we can, too, uh, mm -hmm. because operating in contests make you a more efficient operator. 
um, you know, rag chews are great and I love rag chews, but I also love to go out and really try to make as many contacts as I can because that's what it's all about when the chips are down is you're not always, you know, you talk about doing a simplex connection into the valley and hey, you know what, you might be able to do that. You might be able to do it today, but the conditions would be different tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the frequency that you're on today might go long. You may shoot right over the top of the valley, never see it, okay? Uh, you go to the higher bands, but or the lower bands, uh, longer bands, I should say. And, uh, you know, if they don't have the antenna on the other side to talk back to you at 80 meters or whatever, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to talk to them. So what it teaches us is our propagation when we do contests like that. And it also teaches us uh, that in, when the chips are down, it doesn't matter who we end up talking to as long as they're an amateur radio operator and they're willing to relay our information for us. Any other comments? I, I really appreciated the, the little side event that you guys had, the Terry Graves Memorial uh, Ventura contest. And I think that's partially why we were able to get so many contacts was because there were more people out, right? I think my, you know, my family was down like, in the LA area, but they didn't have very much traffic on their two meter net. So it was, they didn't make as many contacts because there weren't as many people out. And I think kind of having that also gave more confidence of like, it's okay, you don't have to have a lot of stuff. All you need is a, a little handy talkie and you can talk to some people and turn in your card, right? And I think that kind of gives you the confidence that this isn't just for fancy experienced hands. So I really appreciated any effort that went into setting that up. Well, and I have to say that, um... Keith did an amazing job. W6KME did an amazing job putting that together. And I think I mentioned it at the beginning, but I'll mention it again, that you are the HT winner. It's right here yeah. on the website, site, right? For yep. uh, <laughs> Terry Gray's Memorial uh, Field Day event. And uh, congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so that just goes to prove to anyone, right? First field day, never done it before. It's not... <laughs> I'm, you know, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that because, you know, all of us uh, that are involved in Field Day, we're really, really concerned about the new users. We're really concerned about the technician class only users, right, that were out there. Maybe they just got their license. They could have had their license for 20 years, but never advanced past a technician. And the only time that they'd ever get on a radio for a contest or anything else other than to check into the ACSA or ESNet or something like that was on field day. <clears throat> and the whole VHF initiative thing was the answer to them not being able to go to a field day event yep. and use the radio. And in my opinion, of all the things that we did, I mean, that particular, uh, uh, what we called initiative, was the most successful. Yeah, I think it was really effective. And uh, we definitely appreciated that there was people out there, uh, and it felt like they were out there specifically because of that. Absolutely. And I hope you guys continue to do contests. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we have your, your mailing list now to notify us. Cause it, it's always the worst when we check in on Sunday night. We're like, how is the contest this weekend? And I'm like, no. It's like, yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, join the mailing list. It's list.ag6ag.org. Uh, it'll direct you to uh, the two lists that we're talking about. And I try to get one out. Matter of fact, I'm going to get an email out tomorrow because there's a couple small ones this weekend. So, oh, nice. hmm. uh, and uh, I think we're, we've got one coming up. That's going to be a local contest that Keith is going to do uh, for the picnic that's going on for Seabark. So that should be some oh, fun. Okay. All right. So uh, he hasn't formally announced that, but uh, when this goes live, he'll spoilers. We'll, we'll, we'll know about it, so. <laughs> All right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, guys. And again, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep, thank no you. problem at <laughs> all. Wow. What a great interview. I want to thank both Lindsay and Tyler for spending the time with me and sharing their thoughts on how things went this year. And again, 
you know, it was the most unusual field day that I'd ever experienced. Anyway, hey, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, click like. Oh, and any comments or questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. Thanks so much. In 73, this is Stu, AG6AG. Hope to see you on the air.